I'm Carl Green from Threshold, and you're listening to Metal Wani. Carl, greetings from Metal Wani. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. We're preparing for um, tour and we will rehearse soon. Um, I just have a cold at the moment, but, um, you know, that's English weather for you. So last week, your new um, album for the journey was released in Europe and UK. I'm sure you must have come across many reviews and reactions from the album. So how have your fans responded so far? Um, I mean, uh, the only ones I see are usually quite positive, so I can't judge at the moment. Um, it's hard to say. Um, but what what we did with this album is I specifically approached it to be quite different from the last one. So I, I was awaiting for you know some people to not be very happy really because I felt that we'd done all we could with that march of progress, the sort of sound that we had then. And I thought the only way to prove something a little bit better or something uh, something new was to make a, a completely different sort of style for Threshold and we're just approaching it from a slightly darker and more emotional way of writing yeah. songs. Yeah. So. It's definitely a different different sounding album, apart from maybe two tracks. Yeah, all right. Um, that's true. Um, so could you tell us a bit about what um the title of the album means and what it says about the thematic explorations and topics addressed in the album? I mean, being a founding mm-hmm. member, were you the only one involved in the thematic conceptualization, or was it like a team decision? Well, the, the decision was made by uh, Richard and I. He's a keyboard player. We we sort of generally run the band these days and uh, when we came back from a, a show last year in Sweden we pretty much finished our touring for March of Progress and, and we said you know that we were both interested in starting to write music again for a new album and we discussed these sort of general subjects we didn't have a title but we discussed the subjects for the album uh, and uh, and what we would like to put across um, so th- these songs very much but the reason it's called the journey of life is because the songs are kind of stories about the journey through life I mean we came up with many different titles that sounded clever and interesting ideas, but this was just more suitable in the end. I mean, our previous lyrics have, have tackled sort of um, politics and philosophy and, and those sorts of subjects, but this is more personal and inward-looking. Um, and the lyrics cover sort of honesty, forgiveness, perseverance, uh, and all those things that are kind of difficult to deal with in, in the journey in life. And um, yeah, like forgiveness as well in the, in the unforgiven, you know, which is just so hard to admit that you're wrong sometimes. Yeah. So all these things that we were tackling then were were to cover that sort of subject, which we we sort of described at the time. And um, yeah, musically it was definitely we had the same sort of theme really. And uh, I, I guess you could say Watchtower on the Moon and Turn to Dust are a little bit like a evolution of the last album. Um, so how did you come up with with the concept of wanting to go? To you know, from to change it to a more um, life, to a more relatable, to a more um, uh, something that is more relatable for people when it comes to like journey. So, how did you come to this topic? Um, really, I mean, there, there were a number of people that um, that sort of passed away in the last few years. Not not least of all our, our ex singer yes. Mac, who was on the album Dead yes. Reckoning, and um, some some family members as well for a couple of us and. I just sort of had that in mind, you know, when I was I was writing, not in a negative way, but I wanted to have some songs, particularly to to remember these people by, so they don't sort of just disappear. And I felt like I could sort of play these songs and and just remember their existence and what they were doing. And and Unforgiven, the box, and uh, the mystery show were particularly inspired by that in the terms of so writing. like a tribute, something like a tribute. Sort of, yeah. When I when I was thinking about these people, I, that was what inspired me to to write these these songs. Okay, really. so um, you know, while listening to the album, I could feel the vibe of progressive rock acts like Yes, Kansas. You know, with a short of a little bit of Deep Purple, mm-hmm. and um, so what was the songwriting process for this album? Um, pretty much the same for me. I, I always write um, always write in the three or four months before we record okay. the album, never never using old material. So I, I want to capture uh, the atmosphere and what I was feeling in that time. Um, because musicians, you know, we're, we're pretty useless at explaining ourselves in words and, and showing our emotions. And 
I think this was always a way for me each time to say, you know, that that was what I was experiencing at this time and, and you know, the life of Threshold. And, and that's a good way for me to separate the albums so they're not consistently, you know, always the same. It gives me some new ideas for, for each album to take the experiences from life and, and not blow back on old ideas, really. Um, so, um, you know, one of the things that I really liked is the album is so comfortable to the ears. I mean, the riffs on the album are completely impeccable. And you and Peter have definitely made a thinking man's metal album. but um, And it's so mm-hmm. completely devoid of tedium. What sort of an approach did you guys take to make this album the way that it is? Um, well, I mean, obviously when you're playing rhythm guitars, that's that's not such a, a an amount of feeling that goes into that so much. That's just a case of um, playing it as tightly as possible to, to form the backbone of the song, you know, with the, the, the drums and the bass. But, you know, particularly for me with, with lead guitar, I always approach from... Um, a point of view of um, singing what I want to play instead of um, playing on the guitar because I just found a long time ago that you, you tend to fall into the sh- same shapes and patterns um, if you're an instrumentalist, pianist or anything, you know, it's, it's always the same. And I thought the only way I could be original and, and be what I wanted to be, I want my solos to be more like vocals, so I thought why not sing them? So I use a, a dictaphone and I sing the parts and, and then try and play them afterwards, okay. um, maybe adding some technique parts later but generally that's the idea all right okay um so what do you have to say about damien wilson's smooth tranquil and highly um unobtrusive vocals on the album his vocals on your guitar lines are definitely you know have made the album sound much better yeah i, I think you could say this album suited his style better he, he normally uh, plays for his own things his yeah. solo project he's always into acoustic songs if you've heard those and he's just very good at that getting across those sort of dynamics and the quiet sections as well and on this album it gave him more scope oh. there was a lot more that he could do with the sound instead of just singing loud all the way through and long um, it, he could bring in these different elements to show that he can do more than one thing so I, I think it shows him off very well Okay, so um, you have songs like The Box, which is my favorite, which is a long mm-hmm. song, but with the moods and the textures used, you guys have again proved how much you can make the listener stay glued till the end of the song. I would rank this as one of the best on the albums, but which is your favorite on the album? It would be my favorite as well, because um, <clears throat> it started out, and, it, and I guess I, I meant it to be, uh, a piano piece. I, I hadn't written anything on piano since we did our first album, and I, I intended that. And the section you hear at the end, which of course has um, big string melody and some guitars, but that was originally piano, uh, and the same as the intro. And that was what the song was meant to be, but I didn't feel it was complete, and I just let the song evolve until I felt it was finished and everything was said. So almost in this situation, I guess the song was driving itself. Yeah. Um, I just kept going until I felt everything had been said in that, and. Um, and then was surprised it was it's probably the the longest song we've done because um, we had one longer but it was in three parts so I, I suppose it was yeah. um, you know it just it, it felt right and and that's the great thing about progressive music is you're not limited um, to having to have a certain structure or a certain length in music you can have that freedom to express what you want to without limitations. Yeah, um, you know one thing I really admire about your songwriting is the ability to write the music so progressively, your brand of progressive metal involves less focus on instrumental technique show-offness and your emphasis is more towards the heaviness and the individual riffs and the soaring atmosphere and ambience. Do you agree? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was our intention when we first started. We were, most of us, into um, metal. Well, the people that were in the band at the time when we before we got signed. And, uh, and someone played me uh, A Trick of the Tale by Genesis, and I, I love this music and found some more progressive. And I thought uh, our bass player enjoyed Rush, and we thought we would combine these two styles of music. I think if we'd started now, people would say, well, progressive metal is this, and it will be, you'd look at it and say, well, that's just technical sort of extravagance and more like um, fusion, really. Uh, and for us, uh, it, was, it was always about the, the melody, not losing sight of the melody. And, not losing people that aren't musicians, you know, in a song. You should always remember there are other people that are listening that don't play an instrument, that they want to enjoy the music. So I, I think Threshold may well be the UK's answer to Dream Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I, I think quite quite a different sort of style really in in many ways. I think they're they're definitely what people call progressive metal, and we're probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's true, but um, you know, you guys recently, like you were talking about, dealt with a lot of unfortunate losses, and um, mm. you've still been a part of the band from the very beginning. In fact, you are actually the only member who has been on board through and through. So, how has this journey been? Um, yeah, it's been the ups and downs, almost like some sort of marriage, I suppose. You know, <laughs> some good points and bad points. I mean, uh, you know, it's very sad when people leave the band, and you know, with Mac, it's dreadful. But um, you know, we had some great times, and I, I don't forget those people and everyone that was involved. And we managed to sort out all the differences that we had in early early years with people. So, yeah, well, we have a good relationship with everybody that was in the band now. Um, because when you're young, you tend to get, have very focused ideas, yeah, sure. and you never experience what other people are thinking. And you know that, that's sort of what the lyrics are about on Watchtower on the Moon, really. Yeah. If you look at those, that's about you know keeping your cool head and not not losing people along the way because you've got such a focused idea and you won't listen to other people's opinions. Um, so that's kind of a, a good tie-in, really, with that. Feeling. So, do you think a lot of bands face a lot of issues because you know they don't understand and they don't look from the other point, other person's point of view in the band? Hugely, I, I watched on um, on we have BBC One here, which is like a or BBC Four, which is a, like a, a channel free to air, and they were showing the documentary on Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. I was watching recently, and that they, they had dreadful times. You know how many years they've been going? They hated yeah. each other most of that yeah. time. And, <laughs> It's, it's an amazing story, and you think, oh, well, our story isn't really that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I suppose they had a disadvantage because um, two couples were, were married yeah. in the band, so that would always cause more Absolutely. friction. Um, so do you think the constant lineup changes impacted the band? I mean, it was usually, it's usually, like I said, something that the bands always, like, face at least once. Do you have some advice for all those bands who, the younger bands who face all of these things? Well, I, I thought it would be a disaster when somebody left the band, particularly original lyric writer John Jerry. I thought, how can we be, you know, original any longer? And you know, the, these great lyrics that he wrote, and you, you move on because um, what you learn in music is, is that many things are, are transient, and they, they don't stick around for very long. So um, the, the core of our band has always been about the songwriting. I sort of discovered, and I thought, well, that's why there's a progression through the years which you can trace yeah. with Threshold Definitely. because. It was always about the writing, and, and people that came in, you usually find it's two or three albums before they write a song, and, and then they understand yeah. what it's about, um, and then they bring something new to it. But you know, it's always been that strength of of the band rather than the individuals. So hopefully that shines through. So um, you've definitely grown with the band. So how do you think Threshold helped you become the man that you are today? Apart from the musical changes, how has everything changed you as a person? Um, I, I think it shapes your life so much uh, because, particularly when you're looking back, I, I can see so clearly the history of my life in you know the time of Threshold, what we were doing. I remember so many things that are tied to it, so many good friendships and, and people we met, you know, from other bands, which have been fantastic. You know, and uh, and actually, when I met my my girlfriend, I, I would never have met her um, and had a family if if we hadn't been on tour at the time. I just happened to be in the right country in the right place. And, and, and you know that that came forth. So I mean, there are many things in life that were dependent on being in the band, um, and it's something that I really enjoy still. And uh, and really for me, it's a way of expressing myself through music, which is yeah. important. Um, okay, so you've been around for over twenty five years now. So, um, and you know, you've seen how the downloading industry and everything came up. So, have you ever illegally mm. downloaded something? Um, I, I tend to listen to um, YouTube because I do a lot of production work and bands say, can you make me sound like this? So they give me okay. some band name. And I just, I mean, I don't want to store all those songs, so I don't download them. Um, I don't have an iTunes account or anything. I just listen to them on YouTube and uh, the, the artists supposedly get paid something for that. So, I mean, it's it's sort of, I think it's sort of destroyed the the music industry a bit for... Yeah, you, know, you can always say that the bigger bands are going to always survive. They always say, "Well, that's fine." You know, they're, they're going to make huge tours and uh, make a fortune. But you know, smaller upcoming bands, not, not like us, we were lucky. We we were there at the beginning of our genre and we we started. But bands that are yeah. trying to start now, it's very difficult to do anything. And um, 
you know, there's always an exception where you know pop music they'll find a way over the internet, but you know really it's it's quite a difficult situation yeah, and. Um, and people feel like they can download your album and then they can give some opinion on, on your yeah, life you know? that's not fair. <laughs> and, and then criticize which is sometimes hard to take but I, I think you just have to say that's part of that's part of the record industry now and, and you know really for us we do it for the love of music now and, and I, I have a day job now instead and I, I work in the studio for earning my living uh, and you know we own something from threshold but it's not you know what it used to be so it, it, the industry changed a lot since um, we were involved um, you know, we, we get more people at shows, but you know, less less album sales. I guess I, I don't know. Probably the same story for everybody. So, do you think most of the bands nowadays are looking um, more at, you know, earning out of playing at shows than really from their album sales? Is do you think that's how uh, the industry's become now? Well, it is for for bigger bands, but I still don't think that um, it is a good way for bands that are up and coming. It doesn't really help. It's just good promotion there. They're never going to be able to afford to even pay for the expenses that they travel on the road. So I would just say it's very hard for a band starting out. And it's, um, yeah, you know, I see. I obviously got some established bands I work with for production, but I see a lot of new bands that come to me, and I just sometimes think, how the hell are they going to make a, you know, any any way? Because you need to, you need to have some income. Otherwise, your record label will drop you, and they don't have the promotion then. And it's a very difficult process now. And uh, you look at these bands that are like I was watching the, the Fleetwood Mac documentary. Yeah. You know, it was extreme. They were making millions that they didn't need, and it, it led to a disastrous lifestyle. So it was the other extreme yes, then. That's true. Um, that's true. But, you know, it's just the, the way it is now. And, uh, and and I suppose if people could go into the supermarket and steal food, they probably would as well. But um, you know, I, I, I don't sort of have a problem with it. It's just the way it is. Right. Um, for the rest of 2004, you will be touring Europe. Is there any plan to tour up U um, US in 2015 and maybe India sometime soon? Um, well, we've never been offered a show in India. I mean, I do have a friend there that I, I work with sometimes. Um, he's back in India at the moment, but yeah. he didn't mention there was any opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that's a possibility. Um, but I mean, we're, we're playing in the US in January. Um, so. We're doing 70,000 tons of metal crews. <laughs> um, I guess not really, that's more like Jamaica, I suppose, isn't it? But uh, So we're playing there. Um, we only played the US twice before, anyway. And really, it's a hell of a long way to go to play one show, usually. <laughs> yeah, it's <so> <laughs> um, No, I don't really enjoy it. I, I, love, um, I love just being on tour on a tour bus, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I would love to come to these countries I've never been to, but. Well, when you go all the way to America to play one hour, usually in a festival, I, I sort of don't look forward to it in some ways because I feel we should either be doing a lot more gigs or else not bothering yeah. at all. Um, but for new, new territories, you know, if we're offered new countries that we've never been to, I, I would always look forward to that, definitely, the first time. Um, I've been to Sri Lanka but never to India, so that, that would be interesting. Okay. So now, um, if you had to... Um Describe for the journey in one sentence. Um, I think it would be a darker, emotional album, which um, sometimes leans on um, some of the traditional values of Threshold, but um, has a very strong atmospheric content. Okay. Thank you so much, Carl. It was great talking to you. It's a pleasure talking to you, Shristi.